Hi, Mark here with Rio Grande. In this video, I'm going to talk about the different buffs that we carry, and there's a huge variety of different types, and I'm going to try and help explain what each is best used for. And um, as you can see, we have a, a large variety of different buffs, uh, ranging in different sizes, colors, and materials, and things like that. Uh, the most common diameters are going to be your 6 inch, 3 inch, and 4 inch. And they do come in a 5 inch or 8 inch, and some um, some larger sizes are available as well. Now, which size of diameter wheel you use is often dictated to you by the machine that you're using. Some of the little smaller bench lathes can only use a 3 inch buff, like this right here. Um, the larger machines, the polishing cabinets and things like that, they can go um, typically 6 inch um, and larger, but you have to check with your machine to see what diameter you can use. They also come in a bunch of different thicknesses called plies. Uh, common plies are 30 ply, 45 ply, 50 ply, and 60 ply. And as you can see, this is a 30 ply, but it's a really fluffy material, so it's pretty thick, versus a 50 ply here with a thinner material, and it's a little bit thinner than the 30 ply. But that will give you kind of an indication on the width of the wheel. They also come in a razor thin edge, uh, it's really great for getting in those really tight little places. Some will have a, a leather center and some will have, say, like a shellac center. Both are great. Um, which one you use kind of comes down to personal preference a little bit. The leather center is a little softer, a little more supple, so it'll ride up higher on the spindle than the shellac. So I'm going to um, de be demonstrating some polishing techniques and I'll do that over here on this uh, durable direct flow system which is really great because it has a self-contained box here that's going to help keep all the dust down and away from me. There's a port in the back uh, where the fan will pull the dust and debris into the filters down below. So it's very, very safe. I'll be lowering the lid. This will help contain the dust as well and also keep anything that comes flying out of my hands um, from hitting me in the face. And my hands will go in through these ports right here, these little holes. There again, keeping the dust really, really under control, which is really nice. So next up is um, how to decide what buff to use for the first steps. So this is our first stage. Um, we, have a, uh, we have a piece that we need to polish and get that process started with. So which one do you start with? Well, right here I have two different examples. I have a silver ring that I've cast and um, I've done some pre-filing work. I filed off the nub and things like that. Just kind of trued it up ready for that first polishing stage. Um, so I have some, a lot of deep scratches I need to get rid of and I want to do that fairly quickly. So I'm going to use a cut down process. This is going to be with a uh, pre-treated buff and also bobbing compound. Uh, they, these two work really well together. Um, the pre-treated cloth buffs are very rigid, very stiff. And the chemical that's in here was going to help retain that compound longer and allow it to cut that ring faster. One of the great things about these stitched buffs is that as you use them, uh, they're going to get really stiff. You can see right here, this is much stiffer than it came previously because this all wears down. So what you can do is you can actually remove the stitching when it gets to be too stiff. Just take a knife and kind of pluck that up a little bit. And you got to do both sides, and you can pull the string out like that. And that'll open up a whole new layer uh, for you to keep on using. Now, it will be softer. So some applications, if you wanted a really stiff buff, you would keep that there. Um, if you want it a little bit softer, then you can remove it. But the cool thing is you can just peel that apart, kind of work it loose a little bit, and now you're back to a softer buff. So and you can do that on all the different stitch buffs not just the yellow pre-treated ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, the wheel here and my ring and some bobbing compound and take it to the buffer and go ahead and buff this up. So what I'm doing right now is I'm applying the bobbing compound to the buff and I'm gonna go ahead and start polishing the ring with this cut down, uh, the yellow pre-treated buff and the comp bobbing compound. And um, go ahead and start get these big scratches out right away. I'm applying a, like a medium to light pressure um, on this. If I this is a silver ring, and if I push down real hard, it's going to get warm really fast, and it's already starting to heat up. One thing I could do is use a finger protection like uh, alligator tape or a, a finger guard, something like that, and that'll help kind of cut down the heat a little bit. 
So I've got most of the um, uh, big scratches out. It's ready f for the next stage, which is going to be the pre-polish stage. So I'm about ready to take this to the sink and clean it up, get the compound off, and go on to the next stage. Now we finished our first stage, which is the cut down stage. It's very aggressive. It's gonna remove a lot of the deeper scratches and things like that. It actually can reshape the metal a little bit, so just be careful of, of hard edges that you wanna keep because it'll take them right out. Uh, the next stage is called the pre-polish stage. Um, this actually could be used as your first stage. So for example, I've switched over here to these copper discs that I've slightly domed, and uh, one has a file texture on there, and the other one is just a natural raw material um, just as it came out of the dapping block kind of finish. So it has that kind of little rough natural material finish on there. This would be a great starting stage um, for the pre-polish. Pre-polish is going to can use a uh, pre-treated uh, buff, the yellow one that we used, or it can use this tight weave muslin buff, which is another good one. It's a little more flexible than the yellow buff, um, so it can handle this dome type shape really nicely. It's going to be contoured to the shape and things like that. You can also use um, Compounds like ZAM, which is a cut and polish material. Uh, another good one is Fabuluster. Um, Luxie Blue is another good compound to use for this stage. So what I'll do is I'll take, um, I'll take this file textured copper piece over to the buffer uh, with my, my buff and uh, go ahead and polish that. Before I do that though, I would want to call out that whatever buff you're using, you want to label that with the compound that you're using on there. It's really not a good idea to use this both for bobbing compound, which is very aggressive, um, and ZAM because you'll never get a really nice finish on there that way. So always make sure that your buffs are marked with the compound that they're going to be used with. So I'm going to head over to the buffer and, and get this done. So uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm going ahead and apply the ZAM compound to the wheel, get a nice good coating on there. And now I'm going to go ahead and start buffing. And uh, I want to buff in all kinds of different directions here. Get a nice, nice finish on there. Have, it goes by really fast. And so I'm just going to kind of keep an eye on it. And uh, it will warm up a little bit, but it's not too bad. So I got a nice finish on there. And uh, I'll go ahead and take this to the sink and go ahead and wash off the compound. Uh, so it's ready for the next stage, the final polish stage. finished our, our pre-polish stage and now we're ready to put, go to the final stage which is the high polish um, final polish stage this is when we're going to really bring out the shine in the object and um, there's a bunch of different buffs that can actually do the really good job of doing that um, to go through them kind of briefly uh, we have the coarse loose weave muslin buff a little bit like the tight weave muslin but it has a looser weave to it and uh, fewer stitching around the diameter so it's going to be softer on the surface and much more flexible so it'll conform to the surface a little bit better. Uh, much better for your high polishing compounds. We also have the um, fine all buff right here. They're again very similar to the loose coarse weave muslin uh, but with no stitching so it's very very flexible and um, you can really conform to the shapes really very nicely. And similar to that is the balloon cloth buff right here. Uh, same kind of construction, but I, this one actually made with balloon cloth. One of the advantages to this is it does lint less than the muslin and the flannel uh, buffs, um, which is really nice, and it did, does a beautiful finish on there. We also have the flannel buff, and uh, it's very, very soft and supple. They have very, very fine threads on the surface. Now, this will lint quite a bit as you're using it, and that's totally normal. So what you're going to have to end up doing is probably it'll shrink in diameter over time and you'll have to end up cutting the threads and kind of keep so you can keep using this buff. But because of these really soft threads up here, you're going to get a very nice finish on your piece. We also have a chamois buff. Uh, this is made from really fine supple leather and um, really conforms to the surface of your piece really nicely. It doesn't lint in much in really the same way as the muslin does. Um, it does discharge kind of debris, but it's not the same as the kind of the lint. Um, it leaves a really beautiful finish. It's a little bit slightly different than the other buffs. Um, so it's definitely worth trying out and seeing if you like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that uh, copper disc I was working on earlier with the last stage. I've washed it, made sure there's none of the ZAM on here. 
and I, I left some of the file marks on here to see what our buff and compound will do to those scratches. Maybe it'll take them out, maybe it won't. So I'm gonna give it a shot with the um, uh, flannel buff right here and the Luxy Fine White Polishing Compound. So I'm gonna take this to the buffer and get it set up and we'll polish this up. So what I'm doing right now is I'm applying the Luxie compound to the buff, getting a nice coating on there. And then I'm going to start polishing the copper discs. And I'm going to start on the part that's nicely polished and see where that's going. And then I'm going to see what this compound and buff will do to the file marks. It's doing a job. It's kind of taking them out a little bit. But I think the pre-polish stage really helped me. And that's coming out really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do is finish this up and um, what I'm done is I'll go ahead and clean the compound off and uh, I'll be done with my, my polishing. So I um, finished up that final polish stage. I went ahead and cleaned out the compound off and I kind of wanted to show you guys the differences between the pre-polish stage and how that affected the piece and also the part that it did not. So if you look right here, right there, it's very smooth. There's no little scratches or anything like that. Um, that's the side that I did the pre-polish on. And then if I turn it around, you can see this part where I didn't. So there's still some scratches left. That's when it really would have paid off to do that pre-polish stage. Um, because in order to get that out with the uh, flannel buff and the Luxie White, it would have taken a lot more time. So sometimes taking a lot of little steps will get you to the finish line faster than taking one big, huge step with just one buff and one compound. So there's a lot of different buffs to choose from, you know, from pre-treated all the way to the chamois. And uh, there's no reason why you couldn't use perhaps the tight weave muslin buff with the Luxie Fine White. That's gonna give you a different finish and different results. Um, what you might notice though is that final polishing compounds on the treated cloth, eh, maybe not work so much. I hope this is of some help. If you have any questions, give us a call at 1-800-545-6566 or visit us on the website at riogrande.com.